still in German. I just took that from yesterday's uh, uh, demos we had with the apprentices. Um, this morning I didn't have internet connection in the hotel, so I had to kind of cobble this together. Bits and pieces. Ausrede, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, the flexible learning toolbox. So, uh, no? Yeah. Um, <coughs> the idea behind the uh, learning toolbox, as it, as it is at the moment, um, is, um, well, fivefold in a way. Um, principally, um, the first idea is that uh, people can uh, access um, and make available uh, content, people networks, and uh, apps uh, via uh, this uh, learning toolbox. The learning toolbox, uh, it's a bit misleading the name. Um, the idea is that you have this mosaic or bundle uh, that uh, adapts either to context or you can personalize it. Uh, you, can drop a, you can drop tiles, you can uh, add tiles, you can also share tiles with colleagues. You can create one of these learning toolboxes for a specific purpose and then share it either with colleagues or in the market. Well, that's quite a long-term ambition. Um, contextual, so uh, we are trying to explore, and that is um, what the main focus yesterday in the demos, how, um, what kind of contextualizations would make sense in uh, different um, uh, professions. And uh, something we, which we call smart navigation, it's also a bit of an ambitious word. Uh, in this case, for instance, navigation with large tiles um, for a workplace environment like we have here is quite useful. Another uh, aspect of smart navigation might be voice enabled um, so that you don't have actually to press the tiles and you can via voice enable uh, numbering, let's say, and access tiles and so on. Uh, yesterday in the demos, we had uh, at least in one occasion, actually two Meisters uh, telling us that Often they have information uh, sitting in tables, uh, technical information um, that they, but these tables are huge and it's um, often quite hard to uh, find the right values, um, uh, sizes of some tools or whatever that they, uh, that, they, uh, that they need. So you can imagine that, you could imagine some kind of smart navigation uh, through such tables, okay, where you do not have to uh, read uh, very small numbers and so on. So that's the the five, um, the five, uh, let's say, um, uh, interesting or, 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 well, I wouldn't call it unique selling point. It sounds, sounds a bit um, um, asset. Yes, exactly, asset. So that's uh, the key features of that. Um, you can expand it uh, and adapt it. So these tiles uh, should be movable um, and so on. Uh, you can create your own tiles. You might connect tiles to third party applications or you might connect tiles to databases, uh, data you have in databases and so on. Um, we could have tiles that um, are uh, temporal, that appear or disappear at a given time. Context, other contexts might be a location. You enter into an, uh, a danger zone or, or, or certain workshop uh, where dangerous uh, materials are being used and then this uh, tile might, uh, you might have tiles that then advise you and give you information of how to uh, what kind of precautions you have to uh, use, and you might have such a marketplace where you can exchange tiles. And now the three contexts we presented yesterday. Uh, one context is the tools, machines, and materials context, where uh, the learning toolbox uh, adapts to the, um, the machine or the tool that you're using. You get uh, perhaps information with respect to, to, the, to the machine, uh, health and safety um, information, uh, and so on, and linked in uh, perhaps to the um, uh, to the producer or the manufacturer of that tool. Now, this could, for instance, be created by a vendor, by the manufacturer of the, the, the machine. Um, they could create such an, uh, such mosaic or such bundles and then share it in the marketplace with uh, with others, with apprentices, with uh, uh, workers, and so on. Uh, QR tags is one way of doing it, but you can also think about using sensors like eye beacons and other types of sensors that contextualize this. The uh, uh, second um, context is we call that uh, interactive book. This idea came out of the Wundbauer Tage. Uh, I don't have the book here. Uh, it's a handbook, a technical handbook um, produced by uh, Stuva. Uh, it's for the Brunnenbauer and it's kind of the, the standard handbook it seems for the uh, for the Brunnenbauer. They all know it. Um, what we did there is um, 
um, the ideas that um, uh, what they describe in, the, in that book is, um, for instance, workflows, work processes. Uh, and we picked one out, which is called Filter Keys Bestimmung, <laughs> uh, determining uh, the uh, sand and, um, uh, and gravel, gravel you use uh, when, you, um, when you dig holes and you, you have to filter water. Uh, so that's a process of 12 steps, and we implemented um, in uh, this, uh, well, last week, uh, implemented a uh, quick prototype of that. Um, where Owen produced some cartoons and we had some learning material attached to that. So when you go through these steps, um, you can get support, learning support um, for, for each of these steps. They are, they are a mixture of practical steps. You have to sieve sand and things like that. And also calculations. You have to draw curves and you have to find interpolations on that curve. So Owen also did a little nice video uh, where he showed on a whiteboard um, how you can interpolate on the, on the curve. Sometimes that makes problems for, for people. So that's um, taking a static um, uh, book and making it interactive. The third um, uh, context example is one where you have this white folder where they have the, their projects, the students here in Barabite, and we uh, stuck then one of these QR tags on top of it. And when you read that, um, the idea is that the uh, learning toolbox will then uh, give you a contextual information uh, like videos or the materials that you may use. Um, and so on of this um, of that project. So the three these three these three um, examples were quite well received yesterday, and there were at the Brunnenbau. Of course, they were very excited that we <coughs> their Stuva example in there. Um, but uh, we had also others who were quite uh, interested in, in all that stuff. Right, Ooh, lots of texts. Um, so in the context, in the broader one, minute. in the broader context of workplace learning expectations, scaling up business models and sustainability. Uh, what ideas are there? Uh, workplace learning, uh, that we get just-in-time contextual information, such as health and safety, first aid, experts, and so on. Exploitation, we have multiple target users, we have vendors, manufacturers, apprentices, uh, training centers, and so on. Um, some actually said yesterday they would pay for it. Mm, yeah, we should have asked for, an, uh, for their credit card. Um, we, have, we had yesterday at least a uh, relatively broad buy-in into the concept. Uh, there are multiple business models we can think about. And uh, some of the partners here also see some exploitation potential there. And we can look at it as a, as a technology platform that has also exploitation potential. Scaling up, uh, uh, this um, learning toolbox in principle can deliver layers apps like AppSaw, uh, bits and pieces might be another example, and functionality. Uh, but it can also deliver third party functionality. The learning toolbox has a link to Podio, <laughs> which not everybody likes, but that's not, not a problem. It has a link to. Uh, you can link it to a third party thing. So the tile uh, gives you that kind of information. There's a sharing model for tiles and bundles, for instance, on the market, uh, business models for vendors and training centers um, that uh, enable scaling up. This also generalizes to other sectors. I'm almost there. Um, for instance, programming, hospitality, and so on. Uh, multiple <laughs> business models. <laughs> I'm almost there. Multiple business models um, where different segments and different combinations of segments, such as um, training center, Bauer WC, uh, vendors, ICT firms, um, and so on, different value propositions. Please, in the round table, it'd be great if you can, can, uh, can think about that. Sustainability, uh, also multiple options and, action, and actions we have above there um, give us some chance, actually, that this will be sustainable. At the last point, um, when you program or when you develop, please think about an API. Think about developing an API for your stuff so that we have it much easier to dig into the learning toolbox. Thank you very much.